switching gears again. So from the UI to the back end. <laughs> So in 238, we made significant improvements in terms of um, how you operate clusters. And now in 239, we made it even easier. So just a bit of terminology first. So when you talk about nodes and clusters, it essentially means deploying multiple servers or containers to provide a single instance of DHS2. So we know that many people still run DHS2 using a single server or container. Um, and we want to make it easy to run it across multiple servers or containers. Uh, we know it was a bit difficult, and now it should be quite simple to do. And we do also encourage people to actually utilize more servers to provide a better scalability and better availability for DHS2. So in 239, um, nodes can now be added and removed dynamically, meaning that you can try to plug in a server or a container and even take it out without touching the configuration of the other nodes. So once again, um, you can now just add a server and take out the server when you need it, when you have a spike in, in, in usage. Um, and then you can also take it out when you want to reduce the capacity without touching the other servers. This is very helpful, um, especially in orchestration uh, frameworks like Kubernetes, where you don't really want to touch or even know about the other members of the clusters if you want. We're now using Redis, uh, which is a mostly in-memory database to store what we call the cache invalidation messages that are being passed between the nodes. So when something happens on one server, the other ones will be automatically refreshed and not show stale data. This is pretty internal to DHS2, but it simplifies quite a bit. So Redis is a requirement, but once you set it up, it's very easy to get going. It's very minimal configuration needed to get going here. Everything is in the DHS2 docs um, sysadmin guide. So we recommend that your sysadmins uh, go there and check it out.